Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Building off our last video where we created a Valentine's Day bookmark, we're going to reuse our little gnome here to create a Stanley Cup straw decoration. If you haven't seen the other video, be sure to check it out as it goes over a few concepts we'll be using today. We're also going to be doing certain things a different way, so we're going to add more tools to our toolbox, giving us more flexibility on how we can create models for printing. Let's head over to Fusion 360 and get started. We're going to start off in a similar way as last time. We have our project set up with an initial save, and now we're going to be bringing in our GNOME SVG just like we did before. We load it up from our file system and put it on our top plane. We'll size it to be around 50 by 55. At this point, we don't really care if it's centered on the horizontal, as long as we get close enough on the vertical. It doesn't matter all that much, but it's going to make the last operation slightly easier. You'll see later on. Now that we have our sketch, select Extrude and highlight the whole model. Now, I know that the straw on the Stanley Cups are 10 millimeters. I want our topper to be at least 10 millimeters with some padding on the sides. I think two millimeters on either side will be good. So let's make this 14 millimeters and extrude towards the back using a negative number. Let's make sure new body is selected and click OK. Now let's check our work and make sure everything is going the way we want it to. Click and hold the cube and rotate our model around to make sure it has the depth that we need. Everything is looking good, so let's begin extruding our individual elements. Just like last time, let's highlight all the elements grouped by what the final colors will be. Let's start off with the black outline and the beard highlights. This is slightly tedious when you have a lot of small elements, so I'll speed through this. In the bookmark video, you can get some more details on this process, but for now, let's go through and extrude each group of elements per color. We'll be extruding two millimeters to the positive side, that is upwards. Remember to always choose new body when performing the extrude operation. This ensures that we have a separate element that we can control and manipulate later on. We will see this a lot when creating other models, so it's a good habit to have. There's uses for some of the other options, and we may get into those in a future video, but for now, new body is what we want. One little detail I'd like to add is to have the design extend out from the rest of the topper. What I'd like to do is scale up the base and keep the design piece the same. This is also why we extruded the whole outline at the start. However, there's a little gotcha we're about to encounter. There's two ways we can go about this. One is to use press pull and the other is to scale the body. Let me show you what happens when we try to use the normal scale command. Let's choose our base body and scale it. We'll do it about 20%, so enter 1.20. Now, you see how it scaled? While it is proportional, what we can see is that when we try to line it up so that it's centered around the design, we cannot. It's going to be off on the opposing sides that we try to line up with. Instead, what we need the body to do is grow in size. For that, we're going to use press pull and do it by selecting all the faces. Select modify press pull, and let's switch our perspective to the front to be able to pick all the faces that make up the base body. To help us pick only the faces, we're going to the, go to the select menu and choose selection priority. This will ensure that only faces get selected. Next, we're going to change our selection mode to paint selection. This will make it easier to highlight all the faces we want to pull. Let's highlight all the faces, going slowly so that we get it all. It will select both sides so we don't have to worry about turning the view around. Now we need to take care of one final thing in the offset face panel. We need to change the offset type to new offset. This is critical, otherwise the operation will not work. For the distance, let's do two millimeters and click OK.
Now you can see our body has grown properly around our design. This is exactly what we wanted. Now we can check our model and see how it looks with the design raised above the body. Now we need to create the hole where the straw goes. We'll do this by first creating a tube. Go to the create menu, then choose cylinder. We'll change our perspective so that we can pick the front plane. Now let's go back to the top plane and click on our origin to place our center point. Drag a little bit outwards and type in 10 millimeters. That's the size of the straw that will fit into this hole. Now we need to specify the length of the cylinder. Let's do something that is larger than our design. I chose 80 millimeters. Make sure you change the operation to new body. This way it will create new geometry. If we had set up our gnome to have its legs at the origin, we probably could have kept it as cut, but we're going to do it this way and learn something in the process. Let's move our cylinder now and position it so that it's centered along the middle of the design and also in the center of the base body. Let's change our perspective and line everything up. That's looking good. Now let's accept those changes and change our perspective a little bit to get a good view of the operation that we're about to do. Choose the combine menu option. Then click on our base body, which is where we want the hole to be. That's our target body. Our tool body will be the cylinder. Make sure the operation is set to cut. We don't want to keep the tool, in this case, the cylinder, so make sure that's unchecked. Go ahead and click OK. Now we can see that we have our hole going through our model right where we want it. Now we're finally ready to move on from here. We're going to do things a little differently this time to show you another way of exporting and importing into Bamboo Studio. Let's export this time as an STL file. Choose File, Export, and change the type to STL. Save it somewhere that you'll be able to find it in the next step. After this, we're going to jump into Bamboo Studio and begin setting up our colors. In Bamboo Studio, let's go ahead and import our model. Choose File, Import, and find where we exported our file. Once we have our model imported, we're going to start assigning filament colors to the separate pieces of our design. We're going to do this in a different way than last time. This method would involve using Bamboo Studio's color painting feature. Here we have our filament colors that we have loaded into our printer. Let's also make sure that we have the paint bucket chosen, which is the fill command. And let's also make sure that edge detection is enabled. Now we can start choosing our colors for each of the elements in our design. One quick tip is that you can switch colors by just typing in the number that appears on the color swatches. If you saw the previous video where we had exported the model as a step file, you will notice that this model imported as a single object, whereas previously each element was its own object. That's why we are assigning colors by each element within the one object we imported. Once we return from paint mode, we can check out how our model looks. Since we have a raised edge with the design versus base, we can't print this face down, so we'll have to leave it face up. If you want the print settings, please check out our other video, as they mainly remain the same. Now we're finished in Bamboo Studio, so let's go ahead and print this. One thing I did on this print is change the color of the base to match our own Stanley Cup, which is pink. So you'll see the end result here is a bit different than the black you saw in Bamboo Studio. Change the base color to be whatever your cup is. I also changed the top layer where the design rests on to be white to better match the cup. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you got something out of it. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.